conversation with Kathy Adams Clark and Mari Reed. And we are talking about um, photographing birds with our mirrorless cameras and what we have learned um, over this past year, year and a half. So Mari, I'll turn it over to you now. And why did you make the change to mirrorless? So I guess there are two parts to this. There's the change to mirrorless and there's the uh -huh. change to Sony. Yeah. And the change to mirrorless came about, it came about kind of slowly um, as I'm getting older, it became more and more difficult for me to carry my, my heavy gear around. So what I was previously using was a Canon 500 F4, um, which I invariably had to use on a tripod. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'd also have another whole body and lens, 100 to 400, and that I use for birds in flight. So we're talking about two separate systems here. Um, so photography wasn't becoming any fun anymore. You know, it was just a drag to carry all this stuff around and traveling was becoming much more difficult, uh, dragging all this equipment through, uh, airports, trying to get it on planes. It was just becoming a drag. So, and I'd been looking at what other people have been doing, um, looking at Sony, looking at Canon. So this also became a bit critical. I, I switched over in August, 2019. So I've been using mirrorless, Sony mirrorless for two years, almost two years now. And it became precipitated um, in the summer of 2019 because we were going to Antarctica that December. And I knew I didn't want to have to drag my 500 F4 with me. I knew I didn't want to take a tripod with me at all because I probably wouldn't be able to use it. Um, so it was like, well, if I'm going to do this mirrorless switch, I should do it now. Um, so that's the kind of the why mirrorless, you know, it was a lot about the weight and the compact size of these, uh, cameras, um, and the lenses that go along with them. Mm -hmm. So now why Sony? Um, yeah. well, again, I'd been listening and watching other people, other, other bird photographers and the experiences they were having. I was hearing amazing things about Sony's autofocus. Mm -hmm. And um, one, one of the issues that was coming up for me again with, with the older Canon gear was I was really disappointed in how many shots I was getting in focus, especially when birds were moving fast, birds uh, in flight and whatever. I've been hearing astounding things about so Sony, um, especially the A9, which it was at the time. Um, so I rented one. Mm -hmm. I rented one uh, in June of 2019. I rented a Sony A9 and a 100 to 400 G master lens. And I was blown away, absolutely blown away about how easy it was to carry around and how unbelievable and sharp the birds were. It's like every single one in a sequence. It's like, wow, what have I been missing? You know, so, so, um, but there was a, a kind of a stumbling block in there because, you know, what was I going to do for a lens? Um, the 100 to 400 was not going to be enough reach for me in my general work. Um, so then I was, was hummed and hard for a while. Then Sony came out with the 200 to 600. Which is wow. a beautiful lens. That, yes. Yeah. And a yeah. great focal range. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. ideal, you know, yeah, you, you go out to 600, that's awesome. And then you can slap a 1.4 converter on it and you've got 840 millimeters. Um, so I actually ordered the lens, the Sony lens before I ordered the camera. <laughs> And uh, once, because I you had to pre-order them. So, uh, and then I ordered the A9. And I've stuck with the A9 rather than upgrading to the A9 II. Because it just, the A9 II wasn't different enough for me. Yeah. Um, if, if you asked me if I would upgrade now, I'd go to the A1. So, uh -huh. A1. yeah. 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 Um, Canon at the time, I don't feel had the mirrorless capability that they do now. They've made huge strides, of mm -hmm. course, um, as you know, and probably should, Talk about your, yeah. your experience. Yeah. And what I did was pretty much the same thing. Um, and I tested the Olympus system. Ooh. So Olympus sent me the whole box full of everything that I wanted. And I tested the Olympus system and was impressed, but not impressed enough. And then I tested the Sony and was impressed also, but then I tested the Canon and Canon didn't have the R5 out yet. They just had the R and I decided that I wasn't going to make the change. And like you with the lens, 
once Canon came out with the 100 to 500, that was just the tipping point. Absolutely. You know, that, that, yeah. that, whoa, this is, you know, because I was shooting with a 100 to 400 anyway. I was mm -hmm. shooting with a 400, a 500 F4, just like you were. And once they came out with that 100 to 500, that was the tipping point. Um, and so I decided to wait and just hold. But it took forever for that R5 to come out and for me oh. to get my hands on it. So a week before I got my R5, I was ready to, to just chunk it all and go Sony. Wow. And then I got word that the R5 was coming. And so I said, okay, that's it. That's it. That's it. You know, I'll see. So that's why I ended up going Canon. And, and when was that? When, when, when this, was that? Was, this was all happening early part of tw uh, 2020. So okay. I, did, I did all my tests through 2019 like you did. Mm -hmm. And then sat and waited and waited and waited and waited because mm -hmm. it was February of 2020 that Canon announced the R5. Wow. Which gave me everything that I needed. Mm -hmm. So it was just a waiting game. But I didn't get my hands on it until May. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 It's really frustrating. Yes, it was very frustrating, <laughs> was, especially when I'm seeing work like you're doing and it's like, I could be out there shooting. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how, how different is the menu system or isn't it between the, the, the DSLR cannons and the mirrorless cannons? And that's one of the reasons that I'm glad I made the change also is there was, there's no difference whatsoever. It's oh, wow. the red menus and the blue menus and the gold menus and the pink menus. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. Olympus system drove me crazy because mm -hmm. the, the menu system was so different and mm -hmm. even the words that they used. Mm -hmm. And then Sony, it was much more, um, a little bit more intuitive for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, didn't try, I didn't try the Olympus system at all, but one of the difficulties I had at first with switching to Sony was, you know, learning this new menu system and it didn't feel intuitive to me. Uh -huh. Um, but, you know, I eventually got used to it and I'm not sure, I, I'm still not sure that I really use it to its fullest advantage. But, uh, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. So now that you've made this change, are, are you, are you happy? Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. Think it's been a game changer. Literally yeah. it has been a game changer. Yeah. Um, it's made me, I've felt much freer with it all. Uh -huh. It's put the fun back in bird photography again. You yeah. know, it's not a, it's not a chore anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's fun. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. I, I, I suppose I have never looked back. It's like, yes, I'm glad I did this. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree with you that it's the same thing for me. It's a lot of a game changer. So being specific, how has it changed how you shoot? Um, well, it's made me more likely to drag the gear out for a starter because yeah. it isn't dragging. You know, it's just easier to, to pick it up and carry it around. Um, it's uh, it's been fun to use the electronic viewfinders. They, they, it takes a little bit of getting used to them, quite mm -hmm. a lot, actually, because we're as DSLR shooters, we're used to this lovely smooth view of everything that through glass. And then you get this electronic a display that looks like a television you know it's mm -hmm. kind of jittery and once you get past that big deal you know it's yeah. no big deal um it's made me much more confident about my exposures because you, you've got this uh, um in real time exposure with what you see what you get is what you get with yeah. the um if you use the um exposure simulation uh -huh. setting and i think canon undoubtedly has that too yeah yeah we do um, not, isn't it nice that we can see if the picture's too dark or we can yeah. see if the picture's yeah. too dark, too light, yep. right in the yeah. viewfinder. And you've got your histogram, you can show your histogram too, right there in real time, you mm -hmm. know, rather than having to take a shot and then view it, you know, mm -hmm. there it is right there. And yeah, mm -hmm. I use the histogram a lot. To, mm -hmm. to, um, I was saying, um, oh yeah, one big, one of the big differences too, and this is going to sound like it's not humble bragging, but it's kind of, it's like, I can't believe how many of my shots are sharp. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, where was I? Uh, North Dakota a few weeks ago, and I took a, a, a series of shots of a blue wing teal taking flight uh -huh. coming straight at me. There now, my Canons, my older Canon DSLRs would have really struggled with that. I'm, I'm sure the, the mirrorless Canons would probably have done a good job too, but this one, Every single one of those is in is in focus. Every single one, even with that focal uh, that focal um, uh, point changing as the birds are approaching me, the focal distance changing. 
Wow. Yeah. And and I, I, have like to, <laughs> I have to agree with you on that. I was using a D1X with by Canon. And that D1X, when it when it got focus, it held focus. I mean, that you, we just never lost it. Uh-huh. And I didn't know whether the R5 would be able to do the same thing. But the other mm-hmm. day, I was just putzing around while we were waiting for a Lemkin. A Lemkin showed up here in Texas. And we were waiting for it. And I was just putzing around with flying birds. And all of a sudden I start, I locked in on a flying bird coming right at us. And then I realized, oh my gosh, it's the Lincoln. Oh, <laughs> you know, oh my God. <laughs> wow. Cool. Cool. And it did it. Yeah. 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 It's amazing technology. I mean, you still got to get on the bird, you know, you still mm-hmm. got to have those skills. Exactly. Uh, you yeah. still have to have the skills, don't you? Yeah. But then the and the, your lens, your one, is it a 100 to 500? 100. 500. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that one and the 200 to 600, they are, again, a more lightweight lens um, yes. than the older genre. Um, I was using not only that 100 to 400 Canon before, but I had a 300 f2.8. Marvelous sharp lens, but oh boy, was it heavy. Yeah. So heavy. And so it's made it a whole lot easier for us, I think, to carry that stuff around and get quickly get focused on things. Yeah. 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 And, and those those flight shots in particular, because you mentioned earlier that you used your 100 to 400 as a flight lens, yep. which, you know, it's perfect for that, 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 that millimeters. But this means we have it in our hand almost all the time. for mm-hmm. the job. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Yeah. So, I mean, I use that 200 to 600 on a tripod, you know, when I'm doing a bird that's just walking along somewhere. Uh, and then it's easy enough to take it off the tripod and handhold it. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, does the Sony have the eye detection? It does. I, I don't think I'm really using that. To, uh, I think the A1 is probably even better because mm-hmm. uh, it's got animal eye and bird eye. I mean, I've heard good things about that too. Um, um, the Canon are the Canon has um, animal eye, and mm-hmm. then um, I have used that for warblers all spring long, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it is amazing. Wow, it's absolutely wow. amazing for the small wow. birds. Where do you miss your digital SLR? Hmm. I miss, uh, well, for one thing, let's see, I miss uh, the ruggedness of, uh-huh. of the Canon bodies. I'm not finding my Sony gear is as rugged. Uh-huh. Um, I'm having more problems with, you know, little bits falling off here and there. Wow. Like I, the viewfinder cover, I have lost at least three of those since in the two years I've had it. They just fall off. Wow. They just, they don't seem to be very firmly um, attached in there. Um, so I miss that. I miss having Canon's uh, n- nice repair service and professional mm-hmm. servers because I'm not in that in Sony now, but yeah. lens wise and um, reach wise. Mm-hmm. So both of the cameras I have, I have an A9 and an A7R4. And both of them are full, what they call full frame cameras, what I prefer to call full size sensor cameras. Mm-hmm. So they, they don't have that one nice 1.6 crop factor that my previous Canon did. Boy, do I miss that reach! I really do. Yeah. So, but then you can you can crop the files. You know, so I don't like doing that, but do it anyway. So. Yeah. Same. I, I don't that. like cropping the files, but that R five, the files are so big. Are they? Yeah. 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 Uh, Fifty megabytes. Okay. Yeah. My so you know, file, it's, yeah. it's a it's a big file. Yeah. Big file. Yeah. 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 So you, but the DX series that were they were full frame uh, sensors, right? Full size. Uh, I went full frame, or yeah, full frame sensor. I, so I was shooting with the D1X and the 5D Mark IV, mm-hmm. and so I just completely got out of the mindset of the 1.6. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just yeah. wasn't. It wasn't part of me anymore. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I went straight from that <laughs> into the full frame. I'm yeah. like, oh, you mean I need to get closer? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. I remember but the sharpness, you know, the sharpness of everything made it made up for it big time. So, it is yeah. amazing how sharp these pictures are. <laughs> and good, you know, good at high ISO too. That's one of uh-huh. the other reasons it was so wonderful to switch was I'm using ISOs now that I never would have dreamed of using mm-hmm. um, with my Canon. It was a Canon 7D2 that I was using before. Yeah. I didn't like to go above a thousand 
now I'm doing 10,000, you know, and if I can work on a little bit in topaz, denoise afterwards, I'm usually much, very happy with the results. You know, they're quite just adequate, perfectly for publication. And my agencies take them. So interesting to be able to shoot at those high ISOs. Mm -hmm. um, I was working in a workshop where we had an alpha model falcon that we were mm. flying. Mm. And, um, and, you know, so it's just teaching people how to, how to get these really fast birds in flight. Mm -hmm. And the light was horrible and it was rainy. And, mm -hmm. But we still needed a 8,000 shots yeah. of yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So the ISO was, was just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But we still got the shots. Mm -hmm. And no, they're not, they're not great. But it was still as a good learning experience. Mm -hmm. and, and I like it now because, yeah, we can, we can get the shot no matter what the, what the situation. Right. The ISO. Right. right. And you yeah. like topaz denoise. Oh yeah, <laughs> I use that a lot, and 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 uh, topaz sharpen too. I use okay. them both. Yeah, very good, very yeah. good. Anything that you miss from the digital SLR world that we didn't cover? I guess I, it's the trivial little things, like one of the the difficulties, little slight frustrations is how small the SD cards are, and <laughs> you you use them right too. Yeah. Just, they're so tiny. Uh, Who's these things? They're just yeah. so small, so easy to drop, you know, when you're changing cards yeah. or whatever. And, but I haven't yet touched wood. I'm touching wood. <laughs> it's ridiculous. They are tiny. Tips and techniques now that you have moved into mirrorless for people who are either just making the change or thinking about making this change. Really get to know the autofocus system, mm -hmm. um, especially all the different modes and, and know when and know when to use which one. Uh, that's one of the things. So I use tracking autofocus a lot because it's yeah. so good, but, but I don't always use it yeah. because I find it um, almost too sensitive mm -hmm. when the bird is uh, static, you know, st and I'm just trying to design a nice uh, composition in the habitat or something. Mm -hmm. I'm finding the tracking is too sensitive i only have to vibrate a little bit and, the, and it'll move off the bird so then i go back to the non-tracking autofocus and use um a, a flexible spot maybe flexible spot small or flexible spot medium and then when i'm using the tracking autofocus for birds in flight i'm using also using flexible spot medium but then i also will try zone for yeah. tracking zone that's that works pretty well too so know when to use those two different modes and, and you know, experiment, yeah. like, you know, whatever works for you is going to be what's going to work for you. So do you hmm. find that in digital, you're using those different focusing mechanisms more? So for instance, I have, I have the rapid button already set so that I can move from one spot to eye to large section. I am using them more. Yeah. Um, I'm not quite as organized as you. I'm still using the default button, but, but that's pretty easy to use yeah. on, on the Sony's. It's right next to um, the, the main kind of, it's right next to where your, your, um, your digital, your digit finger would be, your first finger. Yes. Um, so to, that's pretty intuitive to me. So I am using them more. I play with them a lot more. I've noticed that so much more than when I was shooting digital SLR. Mm -hmm. I, I rarely moved off of, of one spot or that mm -hmm. small mm -hmm. cluster. Right. And now uh, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just moving all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, so what tips and tricks do you have? And maybe what you say will stimulate me to think of a few more. <laughs> you know what I, because I'm still getting a lot of calls from my students saying, you know, oh. I got this and, I, and it's not working. Mm. Um, I think we have to understand how these mirrorless focus. It's different than what we did before. For instance, digital SLR, I picked the camera up, put it to my eye, and it was blurred through the viewfinder until I pushed the button down, the shutter button down. And then mm -hmm. that would start the autofocus. Where now I pick the camera up, put it to my eye, and it's already focused. It's already, yeah. Huh. Same thing on yours, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't notice it that much because uh, usually I'm, yeah, I, I should I should look at that. No, I don't notice that so much because I am usually pre-focusing as soon as I pick the camera up. Uh-huh. If it's a bird moving or something. Yeah. 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 Huh. 
that we have to let it go ahead and do its job. Hmm. And then we have to confirm it or get that focus point in the right place. That yeah. it's already trying to find something to focus on hmm. the moment that we pick it up and, and point it at something. And maybe I don't know if that's because I've got that's the way I've got my camera set. Could be. Yeah, I'm not sure. Or whether, um, and I've played with it ever since the very beginning where it does that, where it just, um, you know, as I move it around, it's focusing. And then when I find what I want to focus on, I confirm it. And then we start working mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. detailed on mm -hmm. it. Well, definitely there's a learning curve and I think um, people need to be realistic about how quickly they can move to, into yeah. it. Um, you know, it takes time. Yeah. And um, there are there are a bunch of videos online. Um, Mark Smith is a good one that will help people go through all these menu items because that to me is a big challenge. You've just got to go through them all and, and figure out what they all do. Otherwise, you're just going to get lost. Yes. And you can customize it. You undoubtedly can with the, the Canons too. Okay. And um, that really helps if you customize it after you've been using the camera for a little while, customize it to where your hands want to move and any of your limitations. Like I have bad thumbs, so I don't want to use, I don't use back button focus, for instance, uh -huh. I just, my thumbs won't work. Um, but I have to put things that work with my hands mm -hmm. and um, I'm used to using my forefinger for certain things. I'm used to using my thumb for certain things. I'm used to using mm -hmm. my left thumb for certain things. I had to program the buttons for the things I use most. And yeah. it took me a yeah. while to learn mm -hmm. or the finger that's going to work for me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I don't think we can just take it for granted that ours is going to work like anybody else's. And there's even oh, yeah, something as yeah. the, the the dial going to the left or to the right. That has to be into it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not even go there. <laughs> <laughs> I know it can yeah. be way too complicated. Going through all the menus. Um, yeah. And then Canon Professional Services told me that their biggest problem that they're encountering when people send the equipment back saying it's not working is that they set too many things and they're oh. cross they're crossing each other my menu thing where you can drop in and, uh -huh. and, and customize just what you use because there are going to be some things you'd never use some exactly issues you never use and canon has that right i think or yeah. something similar yeah we yeah. have a my menu on the back um what about other techniques when you're out in the field pretty much the same as i always have i found that i'm just trying more so there was a purple martin box the other day and it was nice and sunny which means i could get a fast shutter speed Mm -hmm. And they they were they were fluttering around the box pretty well. So why not just spend twenty minutes and just fire away right. at flying purple martins? Sure, it's fun. Yeah, They're cool. You know that we've locked onto them, and so this makes it a heck of a lot more fun. And they're now with the very fast frame rates, uh, you know, the Sony the A9 is 20 frames a second. I mean, the A1 is way more than that. Mm -hmm. um, so you can get masses of shots that show you all these different wing poses. And that to me is one of the great advantages of doing this is you can get wonderful wing patterns. We can't even see the wing positions, you know, they're gone in a flash of an eye. Mm -hmm. And then you see it and you go, wow, that's a dynamic pose. Yes. That's the one I'll convert, you know, and that's the yeah. one I'll use. Yeah. So, so you just you just hang with that bird as long as it's oh. in the frame, <laughs> and as long you're just firing as long as you as long you're as long as you're there. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. so th there's this thing that's kind of a derogatory uh, phrase called spray and pray. Yes. yes. I don't. Yes. I don't like that. No. It's not spray and pray. No. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. It's spray and get it. Exactly. <laughs> Like, spray exactly. and get the shot exactly you know, so exactly. yeah spray it so gun yeah. it like, i do that all the yeah. time so especially yeah. with anything fast moving birds in flight birds bathing birds running around fighting with each other uh -huh. definitely absolutely gun it and you have to use fast cards though yes uh, you do otherwise your your buffer is going to fill up too fast to yeah. um, and then you'll get stuck yeah. so Shoot lots, but then use fast cars. But like you, I don't like calling it spray and pray because <laughs> when, when through the viewfinder, I, I can see that I've locked on to focus. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. not going to turn loose until I've lost it. Yep, exactly. Who knows, who knows what yep. I'm going, what, what exactly. I'm going to get? You know? one, one of the 
kind of downsides of that is I don't know whether it's true for the Canon. It definitely is for Sony is the battery life is poor compared to the Canon batteries, mm-hmm. way poor. And, you know, and I think a lot of it is that you, you've got these real he's got these um live displays so yes. it's needing a lot of power but i think it's more than that i think we just never were uh didn't have the power that the canon batteries did um so i don't know whether that's true for your your mirrorless the olympus the battery life was disappointing i'm not mm. going to say it's disappointing but with my d1x i could go a week without mm. charging my yeah. battery yep and so i just got to where i was i i, I didn't worry about charging batteries where with the mirrorless, I have to charge batteries at lunch and I have to charge batteries at night. And, yeah. um, and yes, and, and it could be, I'm using the camera like binoculars, I'm looking yes. at things, I'm watching stuff happening. Mm-hmm. So I'm using it also in a lot. Mm-hmm. Battery says the battery is low, the battery is low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, video really eats it. I mean, it did with the DSLRs too, but it even more with the mirrorless. Other things, anything you've noticed that's different about the way you're shooting now versus SLR? I think I'm more likely to use um, one of the tracking modes if I'm going to try and recompose something. Um, I said earlier that I was uh, not using it for static subjects, so it's still true, but it is much easier to compose things in an odd or interesting way yeah. with the tracking because it will hang on, the, the focus will hang on to your subject mm-hmm. and then you can reframe subtly as long as you're keeping your finger down, you know, to keep the, keep the focus on it. You can reframe in interesting ways. And just as a, as a sideline, um, I've been shooting since the early 80s, since probably 1984, 85. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you, how long have you been? About, about the same time. I started shooting uh, birds anyway, or wildlife anyway, in the mid 80s in Kenya when we were, when pe- my husband and I, my husband Peter and I were biologists, we were okay. studying um, bee eaters in Kenya. And that's, yes. <laughs> and that's where I started. We, we lived in Lake, Lake Nakuru National Park. Oh, and you, wow. you lived in a house. In, and so there was stuff everywhere that yes. was perfect. Uh, I started it. Uh, film yeah. days. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. It's amazing what we managed to do <laughs> and didn't do. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the yeah. things we missed. Oh yeah. 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 Where you know, oh. now when we miss something, I sometimes think it's 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 my it's probably more operator error most of the time. Where mm. before in the film days, when we missed something, it was simply because we couldn't be as adventurous, we couldn't shoot as much. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. now we can be adventurous, and now we can shoot as much, and now we can try things. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And um, and you know, it's operator error most of the time if I miss something. It's not the equipment. I, I think I think it sounds like you've got the same idea as me that it's allowing you to push the envelope of your abilities. Mm-hmm. Okay, anything else that you can think of? I can't think of anything else. I'm sure I'll think of something once we stop talking, but. <laughs> But, um, I can't think of anything else. I think I've hope, hopefully I've covered what we wanted to cover. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll see what all comes out when I'm finished. Yeah, with this. it's going to be fun. Um, okay, well, great to talk to you. Okay, good talking. Bye to then. You. Okay, bye bye. Yeah.